Hey everyone, uh, Coco 2 video for everyone this week. I haven't done one any videos in a while and thought this was a great way to get back into the swing of it now that I've got some time. So without further ado, let's get to it. If you've seen this Coco 2 in my previous videos, most notably the deload videos for the deload server, you know that I was using the, com the uh, RF output for this. And it looks terrible and to be honest with you, this TV doesn't even do a good job of tuning it. So. I want to get rid of that, and so what I did was I bought one of Ed Snyder's composite mods. Let's get that up in the frame there. So I can take out the existing RF modulator, um, which he classifies this being a Korean color computer too as a Type A. So that's one of the flat lang RF modulators. I'm going to remove that and replace it with this module I just showed you. Um, now the computer sitting here together, it's just kind of as for prop purposes, it's actually already apart, and the keyboard's not even connected. And as you can see here, the power cable is disconnected from the motherboard already. It's not even attached. I've also removed the RFI shielding and so and the cover to the RF modulator. So this right here is where we're going to be dealing with this. I'm going to desolder this. It's got all these various points here. Let's get to it. Okay, so while the soldering iron warms up, we have many of our essentials here. Some are still off frame, but most important is the beer. Obviously, one needs a tasty adult beverage while doing their electronic crafting. I have my Cocoa 2 motherboard over here, my adjustable soldering iron, some soldering wick and solder, and then my Tandy 4825 of SX, which is just going to be watching. Here we are. I'm going to try not to bump the camera. It's on a tripod right to my right. We'll see how this works. So again, we have to be very careful. Um, the RF modulators mostly it's all contained within these large solder points here and here are my seven uh, connectors to remove uh, I've got a lot of additional things I don't really have to touch but either way uh, I'm going to be careful of the caps here and it looks like we have a little bit of a mess here so I am going to just see if I can brush that off and see what it looks like just notice this little bit here I'm going to see if I can get that cleaned off Oh good, it just came right off. All right, a little corrosion. I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything other than a little superficial mess. Alright, clean off the rest of these contacts while we're at it. Usually just a little mix of sometimes water, sometimes a little alcohol. The water I really want to make sure I get it off before it uh, corrodes out. Um, all nasty. Okay, let's see if my iron's hot enough. Should have brought the trash can over, but I slave plans. All right, so let's do this. seven connectors contacts here to remove. I'm going to get the pliers and we're going to bend these back as needed and see what see if I can bend them without breaking. If they don't bend, I will heat them with the iron on low and we should be good. Okay, so let's do this. I think we are at a spot now where we have these seven pins here. So we have it. I just pulled it out. I was able to desolder the pins and desolder these little things that were latched to the board. And now you can see I have a little bit of a mess to clean up this modulator. Apparently, I had some fussing. Is my toothbrush still wet? All right. Clean this off. Okay. Very good. Dry this off again. So I'm trying 
give it a, the best bet possible. That's better. Okay, that's what I wanted. Perfect. Okay, so that's what we're looking at now. Uh, the issue was the pin here was sticking up just a little bit, so I couldn't get it to line up with the board. So I'm going to get this about the way I want it. All the pins are sticking through. I may have to trim those when I'm done, um, but what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of solder on each one and then I'll trim them up. So let's do that. that to melt nicely when I turned up the temperature a bit but for these I didn't want the temperature too high so let's uh, do some snipping snippy snippy and do this right in the trash can okay I forgot this needs to go back on because I need to do these okay so I'm gonna orient this the way that the picture is and it appears to me that red goes to the back of this D10 to my side of D10 and white goes to D11. So what we're going to do is leave this up so I can see it. are a little longer than actually in frame so that's it and I have the wires a little long I snipped on the bottom I snipped off the uh, excess on my seven contacts there and now, of course I got this all wired up or soldered up so now I guess it's time to test it out we're back we have the computer partially assembled so we can test and we have whiskey but more on the whiskey later let's get to the computer so I haven't tried it out yet I do have this uh, Y cable and we're gonna power it up and see what happens alright and let's see if I can get my camera to focus on it there it is very good so now we have composite video from the Coco 2 no more fighting with uh, channels on the tuner. Sometimes this TV's tuner would find it as channel 5, sometimes channel 4. It was a mess and the quality was never great anyway and used to hear every electrical interference through the audio. So now we've got that taken care of. We'll give it a little test. Let's uh, see if the sound works. Beep. You heard it. Okay, so that's it. So now we have a successful install. Let's put this thing back together. Oh, let's test out the uh, BW mode here. We'll flip the channel switch. Wow, look at that. Nice and clear, too. Very good. Well, that's the pattern from the LCD screen in my camera, but very good. The black and white is very nice and clear. Look at that. Very good. Okay, so now we have our composite mod installed. Now let's get this thing back together. Okay, we're going to install the RFI shielding on the bottom of this board and then I'll take it back over to the shell which is over by the television and we'll finish, finish putting it back together but I figured this was easier over here and I could sit for this part and there is in fact more light over here so this is one of those things that get easier as I go and this, this thing won't, won't move around as much so we just take these push pins and shove them in once I get two of these in I should be in good shape do it strategically strategically There we go. All right, let's take this over to the Coco and get that screwed back in and put this together. Time to install into the case. So first thing here, I'm going to drop these things over the edge of the cartridge port. Okay, so put this back in. 
comes up with the holes. Okay, I got overzealous. I went to pick up the cover and realized I almost forgot to plug the power in. Make sure the switch is off. Okay. Because technically the transformer has been plugged in. Okay. Now we are powered on, plugged in. Uh, well, powered off, but plugged in. Let's put the cover on. Okay, before I power it up, hook it up, there's my new 8th inch jack for my composite audio and my my composite video and my audio. And this is my new BW switch. So let's just hook up this. I only have two things to hook up, serial I.O. and this bad boy, which is apparently stuck on something. Alright, I'll put that in. Television on. Moment of truth. Oh, we're still in black and white mode. Nice. Okay, let's try color. And that is pretty darn good if I do say so myself. Let's put a cartridge in there, see what we can do with that. The yellow is washing it out a bit on the camera. It looks better on the screen than it looks on the camera. Apologize for that, but it's uh, just the way it is. Shooting these things isn't always easy. But we'll watch the game play itself for a second. A nice rousing game of baseball. I always like the sound effects in this game. Wow. Second base. Dropping the ball, literally. Just letting the pitcher run after it. I like that if you foul it, he has to go get it. I mean, of course, there could be somebody trying to steal a base, but still. I don't know, pitcher. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, you, you, you just can't run after that. You gotta... You gotta throw it to the baseman. Ooh, I thought he was gonna catch that pop fly. Nope. Oh, all right. I thought that was a risk, but I mean, you were gonna get the run, but didn't think he was gonna make it in time. Let's see if we get a run. All right, we're fouling it again. First inning, top of the first. Zero and one, one out. Red man takes the plate. Blue man throws. Red man a bunt to the pitcher, and here comes the play. Down to home, and he's out. Next batter up, another unnamed red player from Redville. He takes the plate. The pitch. And it's a bunt. Home plate going for it, and we have a run in. Red team scores their first run. How about it? Let's see if they can make it too. All you can hear in the stadium is Cracker Jacks. We have the pitch. And a pop fly, and the pitcher didn't quite catch it, but we still have the out, and that's the end of the first half of the first inning. As we can see, I don't have a future in sports commentating. Okay, I think that's it. So that has been the Color Computer 2 composite mod. I'm really happy with the way it came out. This is uh, yet another purchase from another member of the community who makes awesome things. This is actually the same place I got the Coco SDC, so I'll have a link in the description to that. Um, I don't do sponsors or anything like that. No one asked me to do this. I'm just happy to plug any awesome products that I come across in the community. And to be honest with you, there are just so many these days. I, if you had told me 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that there would be this kind of resurgence and the, the amount of innovation that we have in the Coco community 
the Tandy community and even just retro computing in general, I would have told you you were crazy. And this is coming from someone who loves, loves his color computer and Tandy computers. So until next time, thank you for watching. And we'll just see how long it takes this guy to get the ball. Well, you know, somebody else could have run after that ball. Just throw it to third just in case. Yeah, yeah, okay, we're good. Anyway, thanks for watching. Till next time.